Also happening today is a lunar spectacle. Yeah, there's a reason for the saying once in a blue moon. Yeah. Ashley is here to explain. This is not your any regular blue moon, is it, Ash? That's right. We have a couple different things happening tonight in regards to the moon. And this week we're being treated to what we're calling a blue sturgeon supermoon. So joining me live this morning is University of Michigan's professor of astronomy, David Gerdes. And good morning, David. We talked back in the spring, but it's great to have you back here um, now that we've gotten through the solar eclipse and we're in this solar cycle giving us northern lights. I feel like there's such a huge appetite for what's happening in the sky. And can you talk more about what we can expect tonight? Good morning, Ashley. It's really nice to be here and thanks for having me back. It's been such a great year for naked eye astronomy here in Michigan with the eclipse and a very active sun that's giving us these aurora. And we had the Perseid meteor shower uh, just last week. So tonight's supermoon is actually not as rare as you might think we get a couple of supermoons per year. Supermoons happen because the moon's orbit around the Earth is not perfectly circular. Its distance varies from throughout the 29 and a half day lunar month. And when the full moon happens at the point where the moon is closest to us, it looks bigger and brighter, about 14% bigger and about 30% brighter than when the moon is furthest away from us. So it's it's a more spectacular uh, full moon. What makes this one extra special though is a couple of things. Like you mentioned, it's a, it's a blue moon and what that does not refer to the color. Um, it's gonna look like a regular uh, golden colored moon, but it, it, uh, it happens when we have four full moons in a, in a season. Our, our four seasons have three calendar months in them. And so usually we get three full moons, but this year, we had our first full moon of the summer right on the first day of summer on June 31st and uh, June 21st. And so um, it gives us one extra opportunity to sneak in an extra full moon and we'll have four. That blue moon refers to the third of the four and that's this uh, that's tonight's full moon. The next opportunity to uh, to have a, a, a blue seasonal moon is is uh, happening sometime in 2027, I think. Uh, so. Um, so it's a little unusual from that perspective, but I think the big picture is that this, this full moon is going to be um, larger and brighter than typical. Now it's not a big effect, but it's noticeable. And if you get into the habit of paying attention to the night sky, you will see that this is a, a bigger full moon than we usually have. How big is the effect? Picture taking a, a quarter, a US quarter, and uh, getting a friend of yours to hold it about nine feet away. That's how big the full moon looks in the sky when it is at its furthest away point. Now move it in about a foot so that it's eight feet away. And that's what we're gonna see tonight. It's not a big effect, but, but you notice it. That's that 14% bigger and 30% brighter. That's great perspective, David. Can you also share, because there's a lot of uncertainty when it comes to forecasting the Aurora Borealis, that could mm -hmm. this have any impact? Let's say that there was a strong CME and we had a really good chance of maybe seeing the northern lights here, because that is hard to predict. Would a bright moon like this have any impact on what we could or could not see? A bright moon might actually make it a little harder to see the northern lights if, if they were to appear uh, tonight or around the time of a full moon, because the full moon throws a lot of light into the sky that could help uh, wash out anything sort of faint and delicate uh, like the Northern Lights. Let's let's hope the Northern Lights wait another another <laughs> week or two to show up again. <laughs> Let, let's hope for sure. Um, and then you talked about the Perseid meteor showers. Do we still have a window to see that? And what else can we look forward to in the night sky, maybe in the coming days, weeks or months? The Perseids are past, but uh, but the Geminid meteor shower will be coming up uh, later this year. Um, also, if you look, if you're going out tonight to see the to see the super moon, it will rise a few minutes uh, before 9 p.m. And if you look to the west instead of uh, to the east where the moon will be rising, you'll see Venus as a very bright star just above the western horizon. It'll set um, about uh, about quarter after nine, so you don't have much of a window to see it, but you'll get to see that that bright evening star. And if you miss the super moon tonight, I've got good news for you. It'll still be pretty full and pretty super uh, okay. tomorrow night. But if you miss this month's moon altogether, this is actually the first of four supermoons in a row. We will have also supermoons in, in uh, September, October, and November. And the September and October ones will even be just slightly more superer than <laughs> tonight's. And the September one 
will coincide with a, with a, a partial lunar eclipse. Oh, very so, neat. So it uh, it won't be a, it won't be a total lunar eclipse. It'll be kind of a shallow partial one. But that's another unusual thing that will happen around the next full moon. I think this is all a great opportunity to get outside and be aware of the fact that our night sky is beautiful. It's always changing. There's always something new to see. It gives us a chance to get out of our houses and away from our screens and um, and and looking up, just like the the native people of Michigan who named this this August moon uh, the Sturgeon Moon and said this moon means it's a good time to go to go catch fish. It's a good time to go gather wild rice. And and I think we can learn a lot by just connecting with our natural world in that way. Absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head there. Um, I've taken my children outside to look at the moon and to look at the stars and all of that. So I do think that we are inspiring, hopefully, the future generation of astronomers by everything that's been happening just within this year alone. So I Absolutely. thank you again for your time. So I know we spoke before the solar eclipse and now we're speaking again. I'm sure we'll have more to talk about in the months to come. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ashley. Enjoy the moon. <laughs> you too.